So this afternoon, I received my brand new M1 Apple MacBook in the mail, and it is now some time later, and I wanted to make a review of my initial experience for the first 24 hours. Now, just to preface this video, I am planning to do more reviews and comparisons once I've had more time with the Mac, but at this stage, I've had less than 24 hours. So this video is not designed to be comprehensive at all. So getting straight into it with my overall experience. So the device is very quick and speedy, especially with native Mac OS apps. I was especially surprised at how quick Safari is to load, especially when compared to the older style of MacBook, even when it's updated to Big Sur. By the way, if you wanna see a comparison video between the old Mac models and this new one, click the link in the top right hand corner because I have a comparison video up already. Safari is an absolute breeze to use, tabs load quickly, scrolling is smooth, and the app itself loads almost instantly. The Touch ID power button is great and works perfectly, and is an awesome upgrade for those of you coming from the older style Macs that just had the standard power button without any touch sensor. Now, the screen certainly does start up much quicker from sleep, although that isn't really a huge deal for me. There isn't a whole lot of difference between this Mac and the older ones. Now, one thing to also note about my overall experience, a lot of the things I'm doing in this video are on programs that are not optimized for ARM-based CPUs. They are all designed for the x86 architecture that the Macs used to use, e.g. the Intel chips. Now, I do expect this to change very rapidly as developers update their apps. Moving on to the keyboard, the keyboard is a big improvement on the previous MacBook versions. Now, I personally liked the butterfly keys on the older Macs, but this new one will be much better for those looking for a more traditional feel. There is plenty of keyboard travel and the keys feel solid under the finger, so I'm excited to do a lot more typing on it. Moving on to fans and heat, which is probably one of my most requested topics. So obviously this is 100 times better than the old Mac versions. Obviously zero fan noise. This thing does not have any fans and makes no noise. And the new M1 Macs just don't seem to heat up even when editing or you have a lot of tabs open in whatever browser you're using. Contrast this to my old MacBook, which <laughs> literally half an hour ago, the fans were blazing and all it was doing was updating the operating system to Big Sur. If you attached wings to this thing, I think it would actually become airborne. Now, this new Mac being so cool and being so quiet, it's great for those who like to sit with their MacBook in bed or on a chair and work or watch videos. Or for me, have the Mac resting on the carpet while I do some work or watch some videos. Now, I literally could not do this with my old MacBook as it was just too hot. Now, this new Mac also doesn't seem to slow down nearly as much as the old versions. If I've got a lot of tabs open or a lot of programs open, it just doesn't seem to be a big issue with this Mac. Now, I'm not sure if that's mainly a Big Sur thing or the ARM-based architecture of the M1 chip, but I'll be examining this in a future review. Now, I'll also show you a quick clip from one of my most recent videos where I'm scrubbing the timeline in Resolve, doing some rendering, using a 4K preview with 4K footage, and the Mac, literally, again, no noise and almost no heat. Save. Now this is playing in full native 4K. And as you can see, that is working very well. And if we scrub, it is playing back perfectly. There's absolutely no delay, there's no lag. That is playing without any issues, which is very surprising to me because this is, again, a base model Mac. It cost about a thousand US dollars. And this is playing footage that sometimes even my main PC computer would struggle with. And if we test this out, it's not hot at all. It's not even warm. It's completely cool to the touch. Whereas my old MacBook Pro would be a furnace right now and you could pretty much cook an egg off it. But as you can see here, this is several minutes of 4K footage and it is rendering perfectly fine. No fans, no heat. Doesn't seem like there's any kind of thermal throttling. It almost feels like the M1 chip is just barely doing anything. It's like it's on a holiday at the beach at the moment. And again, this is 4K full frame footage 
at 100 megabits per second. And this machine is having absolutely no issues with it. This thing has been doing 4K stuff for the last half an hour and it has not warmed up at all. I can barely tell the thing was even on. Contrasted with my old Mac, it would be on fire by now. Now moving on to browsing, firstly Chrome doesn't seem to work very well, which is to be expected as it's designed for older x86 systems, not the ARM architecture the M1 chip is based off. Chrome still works fine, but you should never really be using Chrome on a MacBook anyway. I'll put a link to one of my videos up in the top right hand corner that will explain why. Safari is always a much better choice. Now the Safari experience itself was awesome. It starts up instantly, tabs load much, much quicker than Catalina on an old MacBook. And again, like I mentioned before, this is probably likely more to do with the Big Sur update, but it's still great nonetheless. So moving on to video editing, which again is a super popular request from viewers that have watched my videos. Now I've used both Resolve and Premiere Pro, which I believe is gonna cover probably 90% of video editors out there. And on both of these programs, I used 4K footage from a mirrorless camera, which is the Sony a7 III. By the way, that's the camera that shot all of this B-roll you're now watching. And the footage is also 100 megabits per second 4K footage at about 25 FPS. Now it's important to note that I couldn't get the 17.1 beta version of Resolve to work, which is the one that's actually made and optimized for the M1 chip. I kept getting this error message and nothing I did could fix it. So everything you see in this video is me using version 16, which surprisingly still works perfectly well. So I'm excited to download the 17.1 beta when it works and use that. Now, in terms of rendering, I'm averaging about two minutes to render three minutes of 4K footage, which is absolutely awesome on such a budget and small machine. And again, the Mac just doesn't seem to heat up even when rendering 4K footage. And I know I've mentioned it so many times, but there's zero fan noise. Now, this is all very interesting to me because just last week, I tried editing a video on my 2017 MacBook Pro while in a hotel and the experience was absolutely horrible. On a side note, both that MacBook Pro and this MacBook Air are both the base models. Now using this new MacBook to edit and render is almost as good as my desktop PC with a 3900X Threadripper CPU and GTX 1080 GPU. Now moving on to the battery, I'm gonna update more on this once I've spent more time with the machine. However, I've been using this all day, including downloading, testing, editing, rendering, and installing, and I've still got over 20% left. And this is literally still on a factory charge from late October of about 90%. I haven't even plugged it into power yet. Again, I've been rendering, editing, and spent hours and hours and hours on this machine and it's still on its factory charge. That is absolutely insane battery performance and I'm excited to see how it will perform over the long term. Compared to the old MacBook Air, it is heaps better and especially when compared to the old MacBook Pro, it just blows it out of the water. I would say it's almost triple the battery life. So that's it from me for now. Again, this was just a really brief review of my first 24 hours with the new M1 MacBook. I'm gonna keep using it, keep making some more comparison videos and updates. And then after a few more weeks, I'll do a full review. And then after a few months, I'll do another one. And that will give you more of a better idea of the long-term usage. And also by then, hopefully a lot of the apps and programs will be updated to support the new M1 chip. If you guys have any questions or comments, please do comment below in the comment section. But apart from that, thank you for watching and I will catch you in the next one.